Hi, I'm Robin Hardin. Welcome to Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams and your visions. My guest today, Joyce, is an anointed woman of God, and she shares a pretty detailed dream, much of which she has the interpretation for. I'm able then to come back and just share and fill in the blanks. Of course, there's always Shonda, familiar face. She has a whole series of dreams today, starting with this one. There was this yard and there was this house, but this pastor was building this house for me. And this, this particular pastor is the pastor where I uh, used to go to church. He was building this house and um, it seemed like he, uh, I could see the foundation. It was a brick house. Um, and I was standing, I was standing uh, like in the front door and I was looking through the house and I could see uh, there wasn't any furniture or anything there but I could see uh, this room this empty room in the back of the house and um, there was a garage and the garage was detached and I was saying that I need a covering for my car so I can put my car in the garage to have a cover over it and um, I'm thinking this pastor is still in the yard somewhere, but I remember seeing a tree. Remember seeing a tree in a yard, and it was a, it was probably an older tree. It was big, might have been an oak tree or something. Um, but you could tell that tree had been there for a while. And I remember standing in front of the house and on the porch, and I was singing. I was singing a song. I don't know what I was singing. Shauna, thanks for these dreams. I don't know if they happened all in the same night or not, but they are so connected. The Lord is showing you your spiritual life from the past. This isn't about a particular church or pastor, as you probably realize. The pastor in the dream is building you a house. That's your spiritual life, and it's brick. It's strong, it's durable, it's solid. But in the dream, the garage is detached from the house. A garage is where you keep your car. Your car is your ministry. The garage protects your ministry, and yet it's been detached. I believe you've told me this is a fairly new church for you, and probably in the move, the covering that you once had has been detached. It's important that you get that back. In the dream, you knew that because you said, I need a covering for my car. The Lord answered that request in the dream. He showed you three large oak trees. Trees many times in the Bible represent strong men or government. In this dream it represents the government of your spiritual life. Three is the Trinity, so we know this is from the Lord. He wants you to have that covering. It needs to be someone who is full of the Holy Spirit, someone who's been there a long time, like you said the oak trees had. When you get that covering, you're going to be standing on the porch and singing. I believe your voice is the ministry that the Lord is calling you to, and you're on the porch and you're sharing it with people after you got that covering. He's going to bless you because that's part of His instruction is for us to have a covering. Joyce, you dream a lot. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I love to sleep soundly, you know, and they say that it's that REM sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that you get those dreams and I, I don't remember them all but I love when I do and this particular one once again I'm, I wasn't watching myself I was in the dream and so this was a, and, and Mary Ellen McFadden doesn't mind if I mention her name okay. but we're together at an event and she is my best friend forever and prayer partner I mean we yes. pray together virtually every single day mm -hmm. so it's hard for us to miss a day praying together and just chatting together and just saying God put this person on my heart and mm -hmm. and and if you don't have someone like that get somebody it's yes. so on it's so wonderful you know <laughs> yes. what I'm saying yes. it's like you and the board yes. of Love's Way and the board of Joseph mm -hmm. Storehouse and all of the the committees and and Monica that you're very very right. good friends with you have those people yeah. and that as it's you were important. talking iron sharpening iron and it's so important mm -hmm. And where one will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand yes, to flight. Yes. And so, you know, there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. out there that's trying to keep back the purposes of God, but yeah. 
They've lost He's anyway. Lost. <laughs> so anyway, we're somewhere and we we leave the venue of whatever it was. It was a big stadium, and uh, and that speaks to me of big corporate events that we attend mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a while to find the car, and so once again, it's it's like that transition mm -hmm. state. You know, when, where you don't know where your car is, or you don't even know what your car looks like. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. So I end up in a and we end up in a car. I don't even know what the car looks like anymore. I don't know what the ministry looks yes, like unless yes. God leads me. Yes. So anyway, we're on this and we go down a road. We're in a residential section. We go down a road and I turn before I'm supposed to. Okay, we go to the intersection and turn and there are two deer that kind of lean forward in into the car, almost like they're going to get come in front, but they aren't. And one is the natural fawn color, mm -hmm. and the other one's kind of a gray. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I just noticed it, but then I went ahead and turned, thinking, I think I'm turning at the wrong place. Once again, mm -hmm. that same theme. Yeah. And so we're going down a road, and it's absolutely unfamiliar. And there are signs, you know, the interstate signs, mm -hmm. you know, that you can read. And I mean, I, I don't even understand what they're saying. There's letters on there, and I don't recognize what the letters are making a word of. Right. I know that it's not some, it doesn't say Nashville or Birmingham or Huntsville right. or Lebanon <laughs> yeah. or any of those things. And I'm thinking, which, which way do you go? Mm -hmm. And so I'm in, uh, and it's a big lane. And, like a four-lane highway and just different signs and I'm saying Mary Ellen can you read those signs and she wasn't able to either and so I just took a road and we ended up going kind of up like this into a roadblock and it was a pr very precarious way and I thought now I'm stuck I can't go anywhere I'm going the wrong way anyway so all of a sudden I mean I'm trying to turn around, then all of a sudden in the dream, I'm in a seat over water. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing holding me up at all. I'm, and there's nothing on my side, and there's nothing in front of me. And I'm re I realize Mary Ellen is behind me, and we are not, we're not sitting in a seat that has anything attached to it right. anywhere. Wow. And in the dream, I, f I, f I feel like if I move... That, I'm, that I could fall or something like that. And I just want to be very still because there's something taking us over the water mm -hmm. from one place to another because I could see the, the skyline over kind of like a cliffy area mm -hmm. that we were going and the water, there was water everywhere and it was deep. You could tell that it was a deep river. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, and I thought I need to be very, very still. Mm -hmm. Because I could feel that if I moved at all, right. it would wiggle and I would be unsafe. Yeah. Such a thing. I felt it. I mean, I felt mm -hmm. it in the dream. Because you felt it because God is a spirit and he's talking to your spirit. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking to your brain. You felt it in your spirit because mm -hmm. he's talking to your spirit. And there's a real theme. And we know God speaks in things because he's talking to you about your situation in life. You had a friend with you. Mm -hmm. Both dreams, they were females that are very godly women. In both dreams, they're behind you, but supporting you. You're in front, which is, in some capacity, you are leading. Hmm. And they're, they're, you know, when someone says, I'm behind you, that means I'm yeah. just supporting you. Yeah. Be, what scripture? Be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Every mm. dream, if it's from the Lord, there's either a scripture that is in it or it comes in your spirit or it's actually in the dream that's confirmation and when you said there's nothing holding me it's just him and to be still and know that i am god mm -hmm. because you are in a transition from one place to the other in this right. dream just like the bridge in the other dream the water's underneath of you again mm -hmm. which is you know troubled water deep precarious, you know, right. it's kind of scary. Sometimes the water is the Holy Spirit, but in this case, the Holy Spirit is the one holding you. Mm -hmm. So that's not him down there. You feel like you took a wrong turn wrong in this turn. dream. Mm -hmm. In this dream, you thought you turned too soon. So that implies getting ahead of God. Sometimes he wants us to wait. 
Yeah. And you know, even when he has a call, I knew I was going to Africa years before I went. Mm -hmm. And I had many opportunities to go, but I knew it wasn't the right time. And actually, you're the one who came to me on a Wednesday night and said, the Lord says you're going mm -hmm. sooner than you think. Right, I remember that. Had I gone sooner, it would have been the wrong time. Right. And so, sometimes we do get ahead of God, but even when we do, mm. we go around, we go the long way, but He's there. He's there for us. And what did he do? The turning too soon took you not where he wanted you. He wanted you over here. So he took you over there. Oh, yeah. And he did it because you didn't take the wrong turn. You didn't step off the path. You didn't reject him. I'm not going. Right. You were trying to follow, but you just turned too soon. And we were human. We we sometimes we miss him we hear we think we should go now maybe we shouldn't i mean that's part of being human and personally because i know you i love hearing someone such a strong believer such a deep spiritual walk that you have with the lord that that you are still vulnerable enough to say i took the wrong turn took the wrong turn because a lot of people can look at someone in their life, a pastor, a spiritual leader, mm -hmm. and think, boy, they never, they don't, they can't relate because they never. And just knowing you, it would be easy to go, well, Joyce has never done this because <laughs> the, the time you spend in the Word is such a deep spiritual relationship you have. And yet, you took a wrong turn. In both dreams, it's two of you. You know, in the Bible, he always sent people out two by two. Two by two. He never sent them out alone. Mm -hmm. It's unity. It's someone to talk to. It's protection. Mm -hmm. It's uh, accountability. There's a lot of reasons. Yeah, and that's important. There's a lot of reasons mm -hmm. that he sends us two by two. Uh, it's motivation. It's encouragement. And it's iron sharpening iron again. Mm -hmm. And um, I just love that fact that even when we get ahead of him or we get behind. Miss, take him. the wrong turn. And you were distracted. You had a fawn and you had a grayer color. It was a mm -hmm. distraction that, and they were really close and in right. return. So as you told it, I almost felt like you did take the wrong turn, but it was a distraction more than it was a deliberate turn. Because when we're distracted, that's good. You know, we're like, oh, I should have. And it was mm -hmm. more of a distraction. And it was a distraction this is what I really loved. It wasn't something man-made. It was God's creation. So it was something that just you were looking at it, and then it distracted you, and, and you went the wrong way. But he brought you right back. I love that. And, mm -hmm. and I want people to understand, that doesn't mean you've sinned because you take the wrong road. You just, he had a direction for you to go, and you, you went the long Missed way around. Missed yeah. yeah. And you were talking about... Um, looking for your car and not being able to find your car and there's you it's just a time yeah. of ministry you've yeah. done a certain thing and now that season's done and there's something else and you know there is but what is it what does it look like yeah i, I don't know, know yet like. yeah <laughs> you know and and mary ellen's with you who is yeah. always with you in this place there was no bridge because right. Sometimes our faith has to be greater than something we see. Oh, that's good, yes. Knowing that God will never forsake us mm -hmm. and never leave us, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. That He can't, even yes. when we take the wrong road, even when we uh, can't figure out mm -hmm. what season we're in or yeah. what we're supposed to be doing or, mm -hmm. or, or we're lost. I, I'm lost, I can't yes. recognize where I am. Yes. I mean, He always is faithful mm -hmm. to come up under us. Yes. And because he is faith, yes, yes, God is faith, and he's faithful. Yes, uh, he's going to take us to where we're supposed to be, and, and he'll give he us the heart. next step when mm. it's time. So good, yes, yes. Same pastor in the previous dream. Uh, th this sitting, it was like a fellowship hall where you sit down and eat. He wanted my assistant to help clean up all this mess. And I don't know who these people were, but they had gotten up and it was just plates and napkins and stuff just everywhere. These people did not clean up after themselves. And he sarcastically, sarcastically wanted me when he was asking me, he was laughing sarcastically and wanted me to, you know, help clean all this up. And... 
um, I just remember sitting in a chair and um, I don't know, something from high school. I couldn't remember this person's name. I don't know if they were calling me this person or um, but it was something from high school. I, I'm not sure if it was my name, but I was just remember sitting in this chair and I either said this is not me or that's not my name. Uh, and that's all I can remember from that part. But once he was sarcastically, you know, asking me to help him clean up all this mess, um, I just remember seeing his uh, his wife, um, his wife standing right there, and she was just standing there. She, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if she realized what was going on. I just saw her standing there. The second dream, you're in the same church, the same pastor, but a fellowship of some type has gone on and the people have left and now there's a mess for you to clean up. It's important that you know and everyone watching this knows, if any of you have any desire to be in leadership in ministry, you must be a servant first. If you can't serve, you can't lead. But in the dream, the pastor is sarcastically asking you to help clean. So I have a feeling he knows that this isn't your, your line of, of gifting. In the dream you say something about it's not my name or it's not me and you're seated, a seat, a chair is the seat of authority and you're speaking, this isn't what I'm supposed to do, this isn't my, this isn't my ministry, this isn't my calling. Now we know in many times in churches the same few people do everything because there simply isn't enough help or not enough volunteers going on. But make sure that you know that God has a place for you to serve. And maybe you're serving in a place that He needs you to do something else. Still serve, but in the area that He's called you. So make sure you're not serving in the area where you're not gifted. That's important as well. Hello everybody, this is Johan McGregor, pastor here at Love's Way Church in Lebanon, Tennessee. I want to invite you to come and join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Come experience God in a fresh and wonderful way. A timely word, our praise and worship is dynamic. God has a plan and a word for you. Come be with us 10 a.m. Sunday mornings, Love's Way Church. And I was going into this church. I remember sitting sitting in the pew, and uh, it seemed like it was some um, some young people, yeah, young people in the pew. And uh, this particular lady, she was wanting to um, she was wanting to cut my hair, and I was like, I'm not sure if you know. I this was a short haircut. It was tapered on the sides and the back, and it was short up here. And I just had this short haircut, and I wasn't sure whether or not to let her cut my hair because I thought she was going to skin me back here. And so once she cut me and I felt it, I was like, oh, well, you know, she didn't, she, she didn't cut me. There's a lady who wants to cut your hair. Your hair is your covering. It's your anointing. The Lord is showing you he wants to send someone, probably an older woman, older than you, that wants to come in and help you. She wants to help just trim and tidy up and, and um, tweak the gifting, the anointing on your life. What Jesus has done for me mm -hmm. is given me hope, tranquility, and most of all, love. I started uh, taking care of this young man that had dementia and Alzheimer's. And I follow him to hospitals. Well, he passed away one Christmas day. And uh, I was there. I was holding his hand. And I I thank God for Joseph's storehouse because there's times when I wouldn't have anything. And uh, I love my Jesus and I always will. Joseph's storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. 
They accomplish this miracle each day with God's blessings and the loving hearts of our community. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's Word to hundreds of hungry families. You, too, can be God's hands. Your love offering to Joseph Storehouse will feed many families. I mean, he's there all the time, the yeah. everlasting arms yeah. of our Father. And that's exactly what yeah. it was, the everlasting hands or arms. Mm -hmm. He's got the whole world in his yeah. hand, and he's got my destiny, and he's got Mary Ellen's mm -hmm. destiny, and, and he will never lose his grip. Yeah. That's what he says yes. in John 10. I mean, just read John 10. It yeah. says, I will <laughs> never let you go. Yes. Yes. You belong to me. You belong mm -hmm. to the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. He will never let you go, but he always has more. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what, what it's all about. We're always seeking Lord, what is the open door mm -hmm. where we can glorify you in our life, mm -hmm. the more that you have? If, if Yeshua said, Jesus said, the things that I do, you will do, and even greater things, then if I'm not even doing the things that Jesus mm -hmm. did, then there's more for mm -hmm. me. Right. And I desire that. I have a thirst for that, a desire for that. You have a desire yes. for that. Yes. And, and I've watched you accelerate through so many seasons mm -hmm. just in the last mm -hmm. 10 years you've yeah. accelerated <laughs> through so many seasons yeah. and yet there's always another always. door of opportunity yes. for the people of God mm -hmm. to be exactly like Jesus yes. was and more yes. as he was in the world yes, so are word. we yes, and so I mean I love that that God encourages me mm -hmm. that even if I don't know what's going on he does, he does. And he's, mm -hmm. and he's got me. Mm -hmm. And if I think I'm lost, I'm not. I'm in right. his grace. He knows where you are. I'm in his grace. I, this dream reminds me of the scripture when he says, let's go to the other side of the lake. Ah, yeah. And they got <laughs> distracted by a storm. Uh -huh. It wasn't something they did. It was nature, just like mm -hmm. the deer were nature. Right. And they got distracted. And he, what did he do? He got them over there. It, well, Peter got to walk on the water. And what did he say to you? You were following him. You got distracted, but he had always intended that you were going over there. Yeah, and that's so good. you didn't walk on water, but you sat on the <laughs> on the seat and was carried across it. I mean, his, and I had to be still. And you had to be still and, and know, know that, that he, he was God. Mm -hmm. I'm walking into the same church, and there's this voice that said, "Don't go." But I'm, I'm walking into the church, and the greeters are there. They're hugging me and, you know, um, greeting me as I come in. And I'm going around to the left to get, um, to get a seat in the pew. And I'm just standing there waiting on the greeter to seat me. And she doesn't seat me. I seat myself. But uh, there's, these, there's these young people sitting in the pew, and um, they're in white. And there's um, the pastor sitting up here. He's in white, but he has this belt and he has this uh, razor and he's sharpening the razor on the belt. And in some part of the dream, there was this guy on my Facebook page. His name was Michael Henning, and I remember him from... Uh, school and I was like he's 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 on my Facebook page he's one of my friends on Facebook and I go to see if he's my friend and he's not my friend he um once I pull up his profile it's like this YouTube video and then I'm seeing rap and all this and I was like this is not supposed to go on in the church that's what I said and that's all I can remember Robin thank you and then in the last dream you're walking into the church and a voice tells you, don't go in there, but you went in anyway. And there's a greeter there, and she's supposed to seat you, but she didn't seat you. You had to seat yourself. The reason that happened is you didn't listen to the voice of the Lord. There's nothing probably wrong with that church that you were going to, even in the dream. The point is God has a place for you. He has a place for each of us, a particular place that he wants us to be. And if we're not in that place, then we have removed ourselves from his blessing. You weren't recognized, you weren't respected, because you weren't in the place that he has for you. It may not be the church you want to be in. It may not be the town you want to be in. 
but we've got to listen to that voice. And when he says, don't go in there, don't go in there. There's a lot going on in this church. There's some children dressed in white. That's the innocence, the purity, the righteousness of what's going on. There's a pastor who's sharpening a knife on a belt. Now we know the Word of God is, the, is a two-edged sword, but this pastor is sharpening at it. Um, it just doesn't seem right in this dream. I believe he's using the Word maybe in a way that the Lord didn't mean for it to be. You say this isn't supposed to be going on in church. Once you allowed this woman, and at first you were a little skeptical, which is good because you were testing the spirits. You don't let just anyone speak into your life. But once you trusted her and you allowed her to fix your hair, you realized she did a good job. Then you got the discernment to know there's something going on that isn't supposed to be going on. And I believe it has to do with the leadership and the word, the way the word is used. When you take these dreams and you put them together, it's such a wonderful story. It's such a wonderful message the Lord has for you. He's saying, I know your past. I know that you have set under strong, good doctrine. Your spiritual life is strong. It's brick. However, your covering has been detached. You know in your spirit that you need that covering because you said so in your dream. He's got a Holy Ghost filled person that's been there a long time willing to help you. He's promised to open up your voice, bless your ministry once you get that covering back. He goes on and tells you um, that you may be serving in an area that's not where he wants you to serve, although he wants you to serve. So make sure you find that place that you're serving where he wants you and allow this older person, this woman to come in and speak godly counsel into your life to help tweak, to cut your hair, to just get that gifting divinely aligned. Because when all this happens, he's got a real blessing for you. He wants to promote you. He wants you to use this voice. But make sure these things are in line first. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today Catch Dreamcatcher next time when we start a brand new series from Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. My first time guest, Janice, is overwhelmed with her interpretation. And Shirley sends in a dream selfie where God is re reminding her to remember the Word. Plus, you'll be hearing lots of little nuggets and hints on how to interpret your own dreams. Catch us next time right here on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams. Mm -hmm.